Hey, my name's James, and in this video, I wanna talk about your home studio setup. Perhaps you're thinking about recording a podcast from home, you're doing live streams, webinars, that kind of thing, or you wanna record videos like this one, or broadcast a live radio show. Sound is really important. Whatever you're doing, whether it's just an audio-only recording or if it's audio with video, having better quality sound will make the difference between an average recording and a really good recording or a really good live broadcast. And certainly if you're currently just relying on your built-in computer microphone or some kind of cheap headset, there are certainly some equipment you can go out and purchase to make your audio sound better. So today we're gonna to be looking specifically how to get the best results from your home studio. So if you're new to this channel, my name is James Mulvaney and I am an audio entrepreneur. I am founder of radio.co, podcast.co, matchmaker.fm and Q Podcasts, all doing really interesting things in the audio space. I love helping people grow podcasts, launch radio shows and also engage with their audiences and get those all important listeners. So if you're interested in content like this, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications because I'm always creating awesome videos like this one, talking about growing your audience, audio, video, all of that good stuff. So let's talk about where is best to record at home. Now, actually, this space I'm in right now, I've got very high ceilings. They're about 10 feet high, something like that. Not ideal for recording audio. You might even notice in this video there is a slight echo. What is best is actually if you go into a much smaller room. Perhaps you've got like a little room upstairs in your attic, or your housemates might think you're a little bit weird, but you can even go and record in a closet or a wardrobe or something like that. Again, look at the room that you're in. Ideally, you want some kind of fabric or soft furnishings that are gonna help absorb some of those reverberation sound waves. So again, this is why sometimes recording in a closet, if it's just you on your own, can be actually great because you're kind of surrounded with clothes, you're in a small space, they will take away a lot of the echo and also help eliminate any background noise coming in from the outside too. Things like traffic going past, kids playing in the garden, whatever it might be. So the space that you're recording in, first and foremost, is really important. It can make the difference between an awful sounding recording and an awesome sounding recording. And of course, you know, think about things like background noise. If you're recording something that's important, tell the kids to turn it down. Go into the back of the house where you're away from traffic going past or whatever it might be. But just be aware or be conscious of external sound that's coming in because that can sometimes have an impact on your recording as well. If you're going to be recording video as well as audio, there are some other things to think about. Lighting is important. Um, don't sit with the window behind you because that will generally make you kind of appear like a silhouette. So the best thing to do if you haven't got any lighting is sit with a window in front of you or if it's on one side of you, like in this case, I've got windows uh, on my left-hand side, make sure you have a fill light on your right-hand side. So currently my setup is I've got windows over here and I've got a big light uh, here. So I'll show you these um, in some B-roll so you can kind of get a grasp of my setup. The other thing to think about um, as well is, is the background. You know, make sure that it's presentable, neat and tidy. What sort of background do you want? Sometimes it's good just to shoot against a wall, but sometimes it's good to have some little bit of texture. I quite like shooting um, with my desk behind me. I'm quite proud of my home setup. You know, I've got uh, cool, cool, some cool stuff going on here. I've got my microphone, some good monitors, etc. So think about the kind of background that you want um, you know, behind you, it's not always good to have drawings from your kids on the fridge or whatever it might be. Certainly think about how it's going to look most presentable when you're actually talking to camera if video is an important thing. So next up is the equipment. Now microphones can make a big difference between how you sound and there are two key types of microphone which you might want to use. The first is a condenser microphone. That's like this guy here. This is a Neumann TLM 103 and this is quite an expensive uh, condenser microphone. This was my go-to mic in my previous home studio, um, where it was a lot. The small, the room was a lot smaller, and um, it was kind of less echoey. Um, this is really, really sensitive. So any kind of echoes or background noise, this will pick up on. A better option might be for someone in a larger space or someone who's got some more background noise going on. It's something like this. This is the Electro Voice RE27. And the reason I switched from a condenser mic to a dynamic microphone is this is much better at eliminating background noise. It works really well when you're close up in front of the microphone, but it's not so good if you're further away, which means it's perfect for recording audio, for doing video calls, meetings, and all that sort of stuff. Other things to consider with your microphone are a shock mount and also pop filters. Sometimes microphones have got these things built into them. In this case, this microphone has both. Um, however, for example, here, 
This, this kind of springy thing, this is what's known as a shock mount. This basically will help dampen down any movement. You know, if I'm kind of tapping on the table or my desk, you know, it will help with dampening down your vibration. So it's really important to think about what accessories you can get when you're buying a microphone to make your audio sound even better. Key point to make here, this really needs to be very close to your mouth, as should this really. Um, so I've got what is known as a boom arm. This basically allows me to move the microphone out of the way when I'm not using it, and I can bring it up and position it right in front of me if I'm recording. You know, quite often I'll just be talking into my webcam here. Again, cameras are important. I've actually gone for um, a separate webcam, even though my iMac has got a good webcam built in, it's still not quite as crisp and um, the colors and everything aren't as good as I'd like. So I've actually opted to, um, this is the Logitech Stream Cam or Logi Stream Cam, which again, just makes the video, certainly when I'm talking to camera for screencasts, for meetings, that kind of thing, makes the video look that much crisper. So again, well worth thinking investing in another camera, perhaps if you're thinking about doing lots of video. So next up is a selection of cables. Now this kind of might sound a bit strange. If you're gonna get serious into audio and video, having the wrong cable, not having the right cable to hand, sometimes can make the difference between being able to do a good recording and not being able to do a recording at all. I know that kind of sounds obvious and maybe it sounds a little bit strange, but it's always good to have a good selection of cables. So for example, I've got multiple USB cables all over my house. I've got USB-C, I've got lightning cables for my iPhone, I've got USB micro to USB to USB-C and like all the relevant plugs and chargers because I'm forever running out of things like batteries. So for example, I might want to charge my camera batteries up or I might want to charge my microphone, my wireless microphone battery pack, this thing here, which is actually flashing red right now because it needs charging. And it's really, really crucial to make sure that you've got the right cables to hand to make sure that you can do the job. Easiest thing to do is just buy a load of them off Amazon. Um, you can keep them in a drawer, you can keep them to hand, but you never can have too many cables. Again, audio cables, if you're perhaps recording with a dynamic or a condenser microphone, as I mentioned before, these are XLR ports or XLR connectors. Um, again, really crucial to have a good selection of these. If you've only got one XLR cable of a certain length, sometimes you might wanna purchase a longer one because one day you might fancy recording on a different location and sometimes you'll need a bit more of length. It completely depends on what you wanna do and how you record. But I assure you, at our production company called Q Podcasts, we have literally dozens and dozens of cables and you'd be surprised the amount of times that we still seem to run out or one's gone missing. So you can never have enough cables and adapters to hand and extension leads as well. Extension leads are also really important. Number three, choose the right time to record. Now I know this sounds obvious, but you wanna make sure that you're kind of alone when you're recording. You don't really want any distractions. Make sure that your husband or your wife is out Make sure that the kids are at school or they're at their friends. Especially when you're kind of new to recording, you've got no distractions around you. You don't want the TV on in the next room. You don't want someone kind of preparing a meal in the kitchen or kind of putting on the washing machine or whatever it might be, doing the laundry. Think about what is going on around you and try and pick a time that's the most quiet. Another thing to consider, particularly if you're broadcasting live or you're doing a live interview, sometimes Wi-Fi is gonna be better at certain times of the day. So you wanna make sure that you pick a time when you know that you've got solid Wi-Fi, you've got your internet connections not gonna be going down. In the evenings, the weekends, if you've got people playing on the Xbox or the PS3 or whatever it might be, PS3, whatever, what am I, how old am I? What is it, PS5? The PlayStation, we'll just go with that. <laughs> Pick a time of the day when the Xbox and the PlayStation aren't gonna be consuming all of your Wi-Fi or your internet bandwidth. And you wanna make sure that you've got as much available for your live recording or your live broadcast as you possibly can. Finally, shut all the doors and windows and get into the zone. It should just be you and the person who you're speaking to on the other end of that microphone or down that camera lens. Really, there's no one else around. You know, you need to eliminate any distractions. And once you're in that zone, do your best work. And if you're interested in learning how to be a better presenter, I've done videos on this as well. I'll put a link uh, above or below or somewhere around here so you can go and check that out too. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this video useful as ever. Thumbs up would be much appreciated if this video has helped you uh, kind of get some ideas of how you can go and craft your best home studio. And also um, remember to comment below if you've got any questions or if you need any advice on how to set things up properly. I'm always here to help. Thanks for watching. Speak to you soon. Bye for now. Hey, before you go, let's connect on LinkedIn. I'm always posting interesting content like this over on my LinkedIn channel. 
and it'd be cool to hang out. So go to jamesm.com slash connect, click on LinkedIn, send me a connection request. Once we're connected, send me a message to say you came over from this video and I'll send you some cool things for free. Sound fair? Well, head to jamesm.com slash connect and connect with me on LinkedIn and I'll see you over there.